The following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report, TV and radio. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. Live from the 540 ESPN studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this is the Pro Wrestling Report with David Hero, Frank Cosentino, Linda Kay, and your host, Damian Nelson. Camera action. Good night. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com, and blogtalkradio.com as well. Damian Nelson here along with the Cos, Linda Kay, and that other guy, David Del Hero. Monday night, June 6, 2011, WWE Raw has just gone off the air, and you know what, guys? I, I, here's the thing. I... I it's going to be difficult to say this, but I'm, Sounds like. I'm getting to be done with wrestling. Holy crap. Huh? Done. Are you getting cynical? No, it's just, what happened tonight on Raw? What was our take home? What was our walk away? Stone cold. Okay, great. I haven't seen that Stone 28 cold. times since he stopped wrestling. It just was the, I, I'm, Every week can't be a home run, obviously, but week after week still third. after week, we're not even swinging. It's a strikeout. Balls are being thrown. I am getting to that point, as many fans out there, of not even wanting to tune in because it's not fun anymore. This is not a reaction to tonight's Raw. This is a culmination of many months of wrestling that have been Subpar. You're not pleased. How am I going to get convinced? That's, I'm going to put a challenge out there Uh-oh. to the listening audience tonight all over the world. Well, wait, to call who? Us. To who? The listening audience all over the world. To call oh, You're us. asking for trouble. To tweet us at PWR Show. Go on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash pro wrestling report. And convince me to be a fan of wrestling. I've been a Doctor Who fan for 20 years, let's say that. He's on first, right? It's gone away. It's come back. It's changed different personas that are on the program. At its core, it's remained the same. So is wrestling. wrestling. It's always re- no. at core. Yes, it no, has. It has not remained the same. How has it changed? How has it changed? Yes. It's all about, it's more about politics. It's more about who's popular with the people making the, the, the decisions. It's still good versus it's evil. less about. No, it's not. Vince McMahon told us in 1997 that he's not going to insult our intelligence with good versus evil anymore. The main event tonight was good versus evil. Are you calling R-Truth evil? Are Absolutely. you part of the conspiracy? Yes, I am. The Miz and R-Truth were evil. John Johnny Cena and, and Arai again. is good. I'm just saying, and I want to hear your conversation about this. For me, as a wrestling fan since 1987, watching WrestleMania 3 at my Aunt Jean's house, no, I don't think it was paid for. This this is the first time that I've really felt this way. What was not paid for? We're not bringing any personal stories. <laughs> you started the whole thing. <laughs> it's just, look. You know what, Damien? I want to get y'all's opinion as well before we start taking calls. And our number, 414-276-ESPN. The lines are full right now. Uh, and also 1-800-990-ESPN, 1-800-990-3776. Kaz, I think you feel me, playa. I think you understand where I'm coming from. I am not at all saying anything bad about the men and women who go into the middle of that squared circle each and every week, each and every night on television, and entertain us. What I'm saying is WWE, for the last, call it five years, dropped the ball. They didn't build any stars anybody cares about in general. There are a few, a couple here, there. They haven't built stars that people care about. No, I don't want the Attitude Era back. No, I don't want Hulk Hogan back. I just want... Wrestling that I can emotionally invest in. Holy crap. Again. Where have we heard this before? I don't know. Where have we? It's about time you've come around. Look, I'm just saying. Ever since your boy The Miz went in the tank, you've had nobody Ever to cheer since for. You single handedly ruined the I career of them. Believe me. I had no one. Why would since, I want to ruin my number okay, four draft pick? Four days after you picked him. His yeah. career, when he lost the WWE Championship, now he's feuding with some guy from NXT. You are direct, <laughs> You were the second spitter on the gravelly road. 
Okay. Kaz, do you feel Grappling. me? Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand a little bit. Do you do you do you feel my pain like Bill Clinton felt all of our pain when he was being the greatest uh, president not of all time? Not politically, but what, is yeah. there a pay per view this Sunday? Right. TNA Slam Anniversary. Mr. Anderson. Anderson against Sting in the main event. Where have you been, guys? Oh, I know where you've been. I don't know. I, I agree with you to a point. I mean, you've got to look at the main event and say and look at those stars. You have R Truth, relatively newer. Alex Riley, very new. You have, you know, Miz, who's newer. And then you have Cena. So of those four. Is that pay per view material? It's up to the fans. You know what? Like you know what? I will say this: there was a very gutsy call by Vince McMahon and the anonymous general manager to put three guys, Miz, R Truth, and Alex Riley, in the same ring as Steve Austin, because it just shows how far apart those three are from being in the same league as Stone Cold Steve Austin. You, you know what? Use Steve Austin to, to give those guys the rub the same way they did with Booker T and uh, Swagger and Evan Bourne. All Austin did was beat up the Miz. That didn't help the Miz at all. But agree or disagree with this point. At this time, we could care a lot more about Kofi Kingston. We could care a lot more about Dolph Ziggler. We could care a lot more about John Morrison, about Drew McIntyre, about Sheamus about so many talents in WWE you know Wade See, Barrett. We could even care. Your boy. We could because we all care a lot you about the men. We about could Cody Rhodes. We could yeah. the names the list goes on and on. We, talk we like could this. care so much more about so many talents in WWE. But for whatever reason they've been cleared for takeoff and then aborted that takeoff. It's a time thing. It's not a time thing. No, it's, it's what about... many people have said for years, including Jim Ross, WWE should have been building these stars more solidly, more consistently for a longer period of time than reacting so it is to a their thing. main Do you know why they didn't do leaving. it? Do you know why they didn't build up some of those mid-card guys to be bigger stars? For fear they might go to TNA if they became bigger stars. That, would make a lot of, that actually makes a lot of sense. I guess my question to you, Dan, is define care. I cared about Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. I cared about the Honky Tonk Man. I cared about Roddy Piper, Macho Man. No, no, start, I cared wait, about wait, 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 wait. Start in 2000. I cared about The Rock. Oh I cared God. about Stone Cold Steve Austin, Triple H, DX, The Nation of Domination. Was that the 2000? Right to censor. Whatever. It's all around well, the same time. It, not really. Because you, you brought up See? Hulk Hogan. The collusionist. Stone Cold was wrestling in 2000. Okay. He went in Bayesian in he 2001. Was, he was still he was. around for years after that. So basically, the last five years they haven't built the most enough stars. No, they haven't. As, okay. As a man who's That's been on I this am. show many, many times, Ken Anderson has said same five guys last five years. Now, I don't fault WWE as a business because those were the reliable ones. You have a good horse. Is that horse in the race? Absolutely, because you could win with that horse. I don't blame them. But during the ever so sought after Attitude Era, during the '80s. You had more than Hulk Hogan. You had more than the NWO. You had more than Steve Austin. You had more than The Rock. You had your nucleus, but around it was circling several other orbs, if you will, that were important as well. You had a Val Venus, a Mick Foley. You had the Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian. Hell, even throwing Bob Holly. You had Al Snow. And when all those people were built, they weren't shoved down our throats. Now we see the five- or six-week push that some of these people get, and then they're on the preliminary Raw show, which is what it was called tonight, Superstars. That's why it's been so hard for me to pick a replacement for Karma. Because God only knows how they're going to tease everybody. You know, they had that nice little vignette package for Kofi Kingston tonight. You know, then they tease, you know, something with Jack Swagger, but that gets derailed. It's impossible to All pick right. anybody. My, my theory is, is this, whether you want to believe it or not. This is my goofy theory. The Attitude Era, new. Hulk Hogan stuff, new. Honky Tonk, new. Never saw it. Stone Cold Steve Austin, new. 
John Cena I put in the new category sort of because he was the thug, thug guy and then he did that. That was kind of new. Now, there's nothing new and fresh. But, Frank, here's the thing. Hash mark. Be- between the Hogan era and the Attitude era, yeah. there was the Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Diesel era, which wasn't that good. Wasn't bored with it, though. But it wasn't. At least I wasn't. But you're bored now because you're older and you're smarter. I am. Okay. I am. And wiser. So Not that I thought five years ago it would be possible. There's always going to be, gonna be that wise. little down you know, section Is it in more between. Because you've seen it before? Because really, what could WWE TNA do that's new? Nothing. Right They've done it all. Name it's the all top, been done. Name the top stars on Raw. Cena. Okay. You care about John Cena? You care yes. whether he wins or loses a match? Wow. It's not whether we Linda care. Linda thinks he's hot. I think it he's a great wrestler. It is wrestler. whether you care because what? if you don't care, yes. you're stop, not going to spend stop. money and go this? into the building. Linda no. thinks John Cena's a great wrestler. He is. Why is he not? I mean, he's the champ, right? Linda, Linda's a great wrestler. Linda, Linda, can I talk to you? I, I have, wait, wait. I have a Linda. Facebook comment oh that supports no, your Linda, theory tonight. Linda, good thing you're cute, Linda. Linda. Frank, Dave, carry on, please. Linda, look. Wow. No. Del Rio. Okay, see, they have an opportunity said, there. They do have an Del opportunity. Del Rio, I would put in the... They just haven't done much with it. That's so the problem. It's a time thing. Is it not? No, it's because everyone no, on Raw is paranoid time. about their spot. Moves. I don't think they're giving it enough time. I think it comes down to that. Uh, if we'll you want to rip me bad, you can do that too. But I, I really think they just don't give enough time. You know what, Frank? You got ripped enough last week. I know I got ripped enough last week. Mm-hmm. I'll take it again. I don't care. But I, I really think it. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I do have a Facebook comment here that goes along with your thoughts. Um, with the opening tonight, Damian. Uh, we have a comment here from Cedric Aaron Jr. saying this wrestling thing is a trip. It has not been very good for years, but yet I cannot step away and keep my word when I tell myself I am not watching this anymore. It's like being in an unhealthy relationship. You know you need to leave, but something will not allow you to. And then one more comment to that. Adam Hayes wrote, it's because you remember how it once was, and you hope that your love and passion will pay off for all your dedication. You know what it really is? It's that we've all been trained to watch it. That's what it is. How many years did the Packers absolutely suck, but we still watched, right? It's just, it's just how we're, it's just how we're trained. Yeah, but every five years, it's a whole new roster. Well, okay then. See, every five years, there'll be a whole new roster on Raw and SmackDown. I'm not saying I'm done watching wrestling. What I'm saying is, it for me, for two, four, six, sometimes nine. 10, 11, 12 hours a week watching this programming that's being put out is a chore. It's not fun. It's not because I want to. It's because I've been trained to or because I have to. That is the difference. People look forward, looked forward to Raw, Thunder. Wow, they never look forward to Thunder. Nitro, SmackDown. This brand extension thing worked when they had the talent pool, the talent depth. This All-Stars three-hour Raw crap for next week? Whoa, oh. whoa, it's trying to build a pay-per-view. No, it's not. It's getting ratings for the USA Network. Network. Wants a bunch and of USA three-hour Network shows. doesn't give a dang bit of difference or care about a three-hour, about the WWE pay-per-view buy rates. All mm-hmm. they care about are ratings. It's a TV decision. And keep in mind, again, things like the draft. Things like old school Raw, things like celebrating milestone episodes, those are important. Those are special. You don't I think the beginning of Raw tonight was special? I think the beginning of Raw tonight was a cluster. It was a complete mess. Did I enjoy seeing Vince McMahon in the ring? Yes. Did I enjoy seeing uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin in the ring? Yes. Did I enjoy the interaction and the reaction that Alex Riley got? Yes. But at the same time, <sighs> look at who was in the ring. Our truth Alex Riley, John Cena, Vince McMahon, Stone Cold Steve Austin, all mere, shadows, that. all mere shadows to the true superstar in the ring, The Miz. You have got to be kidding me. The Miz could not carry Stone Cold's jockstrap, amigo. You're talking about one of the greatest money makers of all time, Stone Cold. You have to say it three times in a row, please. 
No, because <laughs> that, that's your gimmick. You're the JR of the group. I'm the opinionist, waiting for my microphone to fall from the ceiling. Tonight, we're going to continue talking about WWE Raw. We're also going to talk about last Friday SmackDown, which saw some noteworthy events occur with Christian. We're going to uh, talk about the winner of WWE Tough Enough, which, as you know, was announced tonight at the beginning of WWE Raw. And some hot news, a couple of departures from TNA Wrestling uh, last week or over the course of the last few days right here. And uh, more are coming, too. They're going to cut payroll. How many times have we heard that? How many times does it actually happen? It's happening. They cut a big chunk of payroll last week. Well, they have to do that when they pay people. You have to cut it. Cut, you know, cut a check. Oh my goodness! You're just trying to antagonize me. I am hey, not by an the way, what's all this six nine stuff I'm coming up? Your little six nine little rain infested cabin something. Be nice if you'd tell us what it's all about. I will. Thursday on prime time. Come on. Seriously? Yeah. Do you, see, you ask me a question, see, I'll answer it. Everyone thinks I'm not going to spin around it and never answer it, and then think that the person that asked me the question forgot what the question was. You going to change the answers? Just when you thought you had all the answers, you're I'm going to change the question. Okay. Because everyone thinks it's Meathead. Who? You know the guy with it's all absolutely the. Absolutely not. Well, thank you, because everyone's you know you know chanting Todd for knows him. what it is. Six, really? Nine, Eleven. Well, you're the one who kept delivering the envelopes with those videos in them. We review the Nitro DVD this Thursday on primetime. Uh-huh. It's See, I, tomorrow. Did, I didn't think it was Meathead because all of his fans need their parents' permission to log into the site first. One of WWE's most successful DVDs was the rise and fall of WCW and ECW. Correct. Mm-hmm. So now this Nitro DVD is probably going to be on par with that in the Monday Night Wars. So I want to make a big deal out of the fact that on Thursday, on June 9th, we're going to review the Nitro DVD. The big deal. There was no secret. Nobody ever asked. Oh well, that's why I had to ask because people were asking me. So the DDP Nitro, we we gotta get him on. It's all about the YRG. There you go. You done with YRG? See, this is the award-winning pro wrestling report on 540 ESPN, streaming live at ESPNMilwaukee.com. Follow us on Twitter for breaking news, live wrestling chat, and pure hilarity. Head over to twitter.com slash PWR show and be part of the conversation. Five forty ESPN. The Pro Wrestling Report. Informative. Entertaining and real since 1998, but you already knew that. Welcome back to the award-winning pro wrestling report on 540 ESPN, ESPN ESPNMilwaukee.com, and Blog Talk Radio. Damian Nelson here along with Linda Kay. Really? Kaz, what are you you doing that microphone over there? Trying to get it up. Are you a Democratic senator from New York? I'm not. There's pictures that... um, (laughs) How, How great is that? Wiener. Seriously. I don't understand. Anthony what's, Wiener. What's so funny? Dick we- Come on. Now, it's your party. I'll take one scandal for all your party and scandals. You can oh, one. You can please. You I'm want begging to. you. Can you please make Sarah Palin run? Please. I need comedy for the next year if I'm not going to be running. as into wrestling. She's, as you know what? That's a pay running. cut. She's not running. Don't believe yeah. And she's so stupid she would. Wow. Well, you know what? Right. I don't say I don't call any of your friends stupid. Oh, don't get me started. Um, Who have I called stupid? No, I'm not saying you did, but if you're just, yeah, okay. She thinks John Cena's a great wrestler, and you like think I said, Sarah Palin's the, smart. Frank, I what do you have for smart. it? Let's just get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> collusionist. Right yeah, right collusionist. What do you think, Disco? You're such a jackass. I want to make Disco one thing clear about that as well. To all you idiots. Who thought I had something to do with that? <laughs> now we're dumb and idiots? I uh, had nothing. I was Tillman. Can you chime in here for a minute? Tillman, our producer, oh, Brown the glass. <laughs> I chime. Was, coming and going. Okay. Last week, here on this very program, when that whole Disco Inferno thing happened, who was in the room? If you could just share with the world who was in the room. And we have not talked about this. And, and he did a thing with the Bible earlier to make sure everybody knew. But you didn't talk about this. 
in the room last week when the Disco Inferno pick occurred. What? Which was not really a Disco Inferno pick, to be honest. Clearly we didn't talk about this beforehand. Frank Cosentino was in there. Linda Kay was in there. Mm -hmm. Social Media Diva. And Mr. Hero. There you have it. Him. See? I had nothing to do with it. So anybody who's blamed me, including you, David Hero, calling me names... You resorted to name calling. I called you the collusionist that's because you name. agreed with that's it. That's a name. That's a label. That's that's not me. That's not who I am. Okay. To all of you that did that, I had nothing to do with it. Why are you getting I so defensive? A, I believe there's a conspiracy. Oh, my God. You're going to wear Confederate uh, here? Yeah, little Johnny. Jimmy. Same thing. When Johnny comes marching home. Jimmy crack corn because I don't care. Oh, Damien. It's really, that that's where you guys are going with this now. Now it's a conspiracy. It no. was collusion. It's a conspiracy against me, yes. Yes, it is. You agreed with them. That's why I was hot about it. I walked in the room and found out you picked up picked and the you skill laughed. Inferno for karma. I did not pick it. It was hilarious. Inferno. Linda wasn't paying attention. She was looking at the John Cena pictures on her Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. I don't see what's wrong with Disco Inferno. I like Disco, but well, not on clearly. my team. And that will be announced Thursday, 6 9 11. Who I will pick. I talked to Legal. You yeah, guys I got the talk memo. To trying to. No, no, I got the memo. I got the he memo. got the memo. What are you... He did. There was no money in that envelope, though. I don't got to, you know, I got the power of the Legal Dream Team behind me. Tonight, WWE Tough Enough winner was announced. His name is Andy. Many of you out there in the PWR world picked Andy as well on our poll on Facebook. And uh, I thought that uh, due to WWE's preferences, if you will, I mean, I learned last week that legs matter, that Luke would be the pick, the winner, for Tough Enough. Linda, I was surprised. True? Linda, do legs matter? And men or women? Whatever. Well, now, Flip wait a, a minute. minute. <laughs> I, <no. laughs> okay, what was the topic again? Right. Dan? We're talking Not Tough Enough. girls trying to drive you to. My question is, I wasn't driving on anywhere. Facebook, on Facebook, several people commented about Andy being announced as the winner of Tough Enough. This is the first season, if you will, in a long time of Tough Enough. Linda, what did the world have to say about this pick? Well, from the comments tonight, it looks like we had more fans of Luke. Just based on the comments tonight off our Facebook post, uh, one person did say the um, Nick Finaccio, the wrong guy, won. Luke was robbed. And we have another comment here, but for Andy from Andrew Dice Sharp saying, awesome, just awesome. I was rooting for Andy day one. Good for him. I just hope he has what it takes to make it at the WWE level. And an interesting comment here from Eduardo Chaslavina saying, if history has taught us anything, the winner of Tough Enough never goes over while it's usually the runner up. Is that true? You know what? Honestly, neither guy is ready for you know. The Miz neither didn't guy is win ready. Tough enough when he was on it, and he <laughs> became WWE champion. That's fine. Wasn't Alicia Fox on Tough Enough? Too? No, she was not. You sure? Positive. Where'd she get trained? Probably with what was it with uh, Killer Kowalski. No, she was for trained in by Al Snow in Ohio Valley Wrestling. So if you have a problem with the way she wrestles, you can talk to Al about it next time he's in town. Did I say I had a problem with the way she wrestled? All I did was ask a a question. This is not crossfire. All I did was ask a question. Mm -hmm. I can't help how you interpret my words. Kind of hurtful. All of a sudden, you're so sensitive. I am sensitive. I want to go to the site of WWE Capital Punishment. Online one, we have Ron in Washington, D.C. calling. Ron, you are live here on the Wrestling Report. (laughs) Hey, how you guys doing tonight, man? Fantastic. Tremendous. That was great. That was great. Love you, Linda K. How you doing? Doing good. How about you? That's great. I'm, I'm tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. Hey, Ron, um, you got no chance with her, so let's go to the next question here. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you. No. <laughs> oh. I'm not that drunk, pal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but in all actuality, I kind of agree with you guys. I mean, the whole thing with um, tonight's all could have been could have been so much better, man. I mean, I'm kind of really, I'm kind of tired of WWE and TNA all together. The whole thing with the TNA just 
still have a Sting as their world champion, which I still don't get. Uh, John Cena still being WWE champion. You know, they're not pushing guys who are who could be the next future stars in the in the cup from Kofi Kingston to John Morrison. You know, and they are making Jack Swagger look so weak. You know, I mean, they made Jack Swagger look like Michael Bo- Michael Cole's towel boy. You know, it it, it was it's just ridiculous. And you know, and I and I keep saying this, I can't wait till Ring of Honor finally gets in, gets in where they fit in, and really take over. And it's a fire under both of these companies where they have to be great because always is going to be great. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen to the fall. And hopefully, I always get the get the right justice due because I'm ready to see more wrestling again. I'm ready for the I'm ready for the way it was back when WCW was red hot and WWE couldn't put out the bull that they're putting out right now because they know for a fact that WCW was right on their tail. So I'm hoping I always get that opportunity very very soon. Ron from DC, thank you very much for that call. Look, we're fooling a lot of people, including ourselves, if we think that somehow or another Ring of Honor on the Sinclair stations is going to change World Wrestling Entertainment, change TNA Wrestling. It's not going to happen. Now, no, that's let not me, going to happen. Yeah, let me remind all of you, Ring of Honor will put on an amazing wrestling product on Sinclair broadcast stations, which here locally will be channels 18 and or 24. But it's a different situation. WWE, and this was amazing when it happened in 1995 when Nitro came on the air and WWE really didn't pay any attention and they brought out the goon, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, Salvatore Sincere and more characters such as that. That's when they were caught asleep at the will, asleep at the switch and did not react and got their tails handed to them for 84 weeks in a row. That's was it really that long? 84 that weeks? Long. It was 82 or 84 And they still weeks. went bankrupt or they still got bought out? WCW was indeed purchased. <laughs> I'm still thinking of Linda's comment. John, see, what? there's a great oh, gosh. wrestler. Are we, we can make this a topic no, of the no, night. No, no, I just, I, I, I want to understand you. I, that's the first time I've heard a person like say that. Really? Not in their bathroom. Oh my. Uh, WCW. Uh, millions and millions of fans wow. agree with me. Do you know that? Did you see that on Facebook this week when the WWE Universe posted that John Cena from the first WWE superstar with over seven million fans? Okay. More that than your boy Terry will let their five year olds get on on Facebook. He's only the what tenth athlete. With Ooh, that like many fans. Jo- I'm gonna like John Cena, mommy. Oh my god, that was your best Ron Killings impersonation. Again, it's a conspiracy. I guess it is. Because I'm the only one in this room similar to Ron Killings. This is this is what happens to me. Amigo, seriously? I'm beige? What's wrong with you? I didn't say anything about race. Yes, you did. I did not. We both have piercings. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't have any of those. Well, Linda, you're... <laughs> I have piercings. We're taking say. your phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Linda and Ron Killings have a lot in Locally, common, I guess. Four, <laughs> locally, 414 Let me tweet it later. Three seven seven six four one four two seven six ESPN or all over the world. All I gotta say is thank God it's summer. One eight hundred nine ninety ESPN. One eight hundred nine ninety three seven. Maybe that's why I'm irritable tonight. These allergies. I'm, I'm losing the battle with grass pollen. I tweaked my neck in my match this past weekend. Your match? Oh, you and Jameson? <laughs> Jameson always beats you, doesn't it he? It was an I quit match. I guess he yeah. tapped, huh? Well, yeah. So, you know, and and, and and I'm just saying, and, and you know, I'm, I'm bothered tonight. It's hot, too. It's 90 degrees here in MKE. It's ridiculous. If it's going to be 90 degrees, I should be enduring that in Vegas or Orlando. I agree. I'm not built for heat. Andre in Philadelphia, John in Queens, and Antoine in Georgia are on hold. You can join us, too, once the phone lines come clear. for are saying, Linda? Really? 276 ESPN or all over the world, 1-800-990-ESPN. Follow us on Twitter as well. Linda, how do you do that? Twitter.com slash PWR show. More of your comments and conversation about tonight's WWE Raw, last Friday's SmackDown, last Thursday's Impact. This is the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Subscribe to the Pro Wrestling Report on YouTube. We promise we'll never rickroll you, but we might just choke slam you. Click the subscribe button now and be part of the revolution. Oh!
Welcome back to the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com, and Blog Talk Radio. Wow. (laughs) You're a little fired up tonight, aren't you there? Absolutely. Q-stick trucker. (laughs) You, my friend, are indeed pure evil. You really are. You're just evil. You are sinister. You, James Mitchell's got nothing on you. You are sinister. You really are. <laughs> You're off my Christmas list, man. Oh. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a rapid pace first hour. I w- All right. More about Raw tonight. <laughs> We've only really talked about the opening of Raw. Let's talk about some of the good stuff that happened because I don't want to be that show that talks all bad about how wrestling's just the you know reached the end of its rope. Beth Phoenix back on Raw tonight, yeah. first time at a wrestling match in a long time. It's always good to see the Glamazon on WWE television, and we did again tonight, gentlemen. Lady, your thoughts. This is where you talk. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I talked to Linda. Are you talking I to me? It's me. I said, Sorry. gentlemen, lady, your thoughts. So maybe well, I'll be want all us to talk at the same I time. Say all that again. You know. <laughs> you know what? Hold on. I've heard how Stern have to get the same stop, stop. You know what? Beth Phoenix looked amazing tonight. Thank you, Dave. She looked like she belonged. She looks like she's the main eventer. She looks great. She does. She's been fantastic. Now let's hope they push her. Oh, I, I think they're, I think they're going to. But out of all the divas that they have on both brands. After tonight, just the way she carried herself in the ring and her and her appearance, it. head and shoulders above everybody else. She has it. Just like Booker T said tonight. Said oh, I don't know if Booker T still has it. He had a good no, match. No, 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 no. Booker T said that Andy has it. Andy didn't have it. Well, his potential is there. Booker T, man, you know, I, okay, when I when I built, when Bill DeMont and, uh, and Booker T and Trish Stratus all picked Andy, I said, oh, there's no way he's winning. Yeah, he of course he's going to win. I'm sorry, he was the least impressive to me on the program. He's six foot five. They so can was, teach so him. Is oh no, I'm sorry, Alberto Del Rio was five foot five when you were making a similar he, argument. He, okay, do you know what? Here's why Luke didn't win. He's pompous, and I'm sure he rubbed people the wrong way. And you know okay, what? Half the rock stop, stop. that way. If you looked at Luke, okay, Skywalker. Yes, just don't say you're his father. Um, when he was, you know what, you know what, he is in great physical shape. Actually, he's not. Luke, stop. But when he took his shirt off, his body looked right. awkward. Yeah. Whereas Andy, he's he's well proportioned. That's big. It all, you know, what, it, it's more than just wrestling talent. It's how you come across on TV. And some will say, well, look at Bastion Booger. Look at this guy. Look at that guy. That's fine. It's all a different time. But right now, they're looking for someone that they can put on the cover of a magazine more so than put in a main event of a match. And that's what they're doing. I want to warn you guys. There's, there's some breaking news circulating around the Internet right now about a potential injury that happened after Raw tonight. And if this is true, I will have to leave the studio to go and fly to Cleveland to, uh, to, to console a friend. So I'm just letting you know <laughs> oh, that if the Miz is no. indeed injured, if he did injure his leg, which a lot of people are reporting, uh, then, uh, then, then we're gonna have some problems, and and uh, I may need a box of tissue. Um, What's so. wrong? What are the? No, I'm the guy that's kind of screwed because I need him no, on the. No, you're paper the guy who screwed his career over, and you would be the reason if he is injured that he is. What happened? What are they saying? What? Uh, what parent leg injury, of course. It is advanced to broken by in ten minutes on the internet. I'm sure it'll be amputated because that's how rumors go. <laughs> that's how rumors start. Cash mark. But the, uh, several people who were in the arena. I know we have a listener, a follower on Twitter, who was at the arena tonight. If you could, if you want to give us a call, because we're live, give us a call. Let us know what you saw during that post-Raw match involving the Miz and whether or not you can I know where you broke it if you broke injury, it. Any apparent injury that the Miz might, might have, might have uh, suffered tonight. It was the lousy suitcase headshot. Because it missed his, missed his head by so much as hit uh, his leg. Or no, no, it too. looked awkward like he fell into the ropes. That could have been. And that was bad camera work too. Wow, oh, this is great. 
Super Friends take airplane? another hit. Come again? Do you know uh, the plane that had the incident here in Milwaukee? What, 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 what was on its wing, on its tail? Quantic. Okay, yeah, because they fly to Milwaukee. I don't know. I don't have that in front of me. Guys, you're the newsman. It's a wrestling show. What's up with all these guys wearing tennis shoes in the ring? Look, okay, this is Radio Net TV. <laughs> Luke, I was surprised he didn't win. Now he's got some skeletons in his closet, if you will, um, as well, which some, really? people, some people are saying that that may be the reason that he did not win. Now, at the same time, what does it matter? Because look at, again, the people who didn't win Tough Enough, who ended up on WWE programming, the people who didn't win NXT, who ended up on WWE programming, this is nothing more than a television vehicle for WWE and USA Network to make money on. And I don't blame them for it. That's what they're in business for. It's what were the money. skeletons? He posed. For this senator from New York and Luke oh. may have shown similar things. Wieners. To different audiences. You know what? Smartphones are going to be the end of society. Right, Linda? I got rid of mine. Well, I, I know went you from did. The, I went from the iPhone back to a, a, a Nokia 6260. <laughs> yeah. And I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. My, little, my, my little poly, polyphonic rings. Polyphonic? Remember that? Rings? It sounded like it was like 10, 20 years ago. It's okay. It'll be fine. I know we what you're are, talking about. We are working the mid-story again. <laughs> um, we're looking for that fan, those fans that uh, were in the arena in Richmond, Virginia tonight. Give us a call. Uh, we're we're going to take some phone calls in a moment. We're looking for that call. Please let our producer know hey, when you call in that you were there. We have a new we'll uh, first. Tron this week, don't we? We might. The Frank Costantino. We'll find out after the Sports Center update at the top of the hour. Are you really doing this to Frank? Frank, I've seen him I, get angry. You know what? I saw how Frank did me wrong with uh, Back on Disco track. last week. Back on track. Zack Ryder is on Raw tonight. Russell's his first match of the year. And how did that work WWE out? WWE Raw, exactly. See, was it the worst thing for him to have been on Raw tonight? Absolutely. How so? It killed off any steam he had. It did was he have a, any? A, well, he had. Did some, he have any with the fans in Richmond? Was there a reason we didn't see his entrance tonight? He was trending last week. Yeah, but was it? it He's it, still trending this week. It started week. with him in the ring. Did WWE not want us to see fans who may have reacted favorably to him tonight? They didn't really react favorably. <laughs> Favorite blah, 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 to a whole lot of people. Well, do you think tonight was the old temperature check? <laughs> Boy, Q check and <laughs> shuffle check? No. Q stick and temperature check, all in the same segment. This is wrong. See what you started, Nelson? Which I'm trying to start talking about WWE Raw, trying to get on task here. You know what? We need to talk about Ken Anderson and Sting. We're going to do that when we talk about Impact, which is in the second hour after we come back from Sports Center in about seven minutes' time. Well, I didn't get the cheat sheets tonight. You don't, you don't need them. You're an opinionist. Remember, you just need to react to what I say. I did react earlier to Linda's count about John Cena being a great worker. Our truth was dressed as a Confederate soldier. The best thing now, so a lot of people said tonight, and Linda, I don't know if you can pick up any of the tweets that came across earlier using hash mark PWR now mm-hmm. about our truth. But okay, you got to give the man credit. First off, we're talking about him. Second off, right. he's a lot more entertaining than we he's ever been. We have to talk third about him. Off, he's in the main event of their pay per view. Third off, he is actually quite funny nowadays. Per- solidified by the fact that him and that press conference thing made all those other mock. President Obama press conferences worth it leading up to this tonight because that was a popable moment. I have no opinion on that whatsoever. Are you serious? I'm serious. That was so corny 80s-ish, you know? That's not going to help people want to buy pay-per-views by no, seeing parodies of, of Obama. Yeah, no, no, no. You're exactly right. But tonight it made some sense with our truth perpetua- well, or continuing his storyline. If story it's a line, PG-rated show... Okay. Parental guidance suggestions. Okay. So let's say the average age of the kids watching at home are what? 12 to 18? Sure. They do good in that demo. Demographic. Why are they going to put Obama and the truth in a three-minute segment? That's the wrong audience. They must be doing well if they keep doing well. No. You know what? No, no. It's because Vince thinks it's funny, so Vince wants to keep doing it. You're right. More discussion on professional wrestling when we come back. 
here in hour two. We're also going to take your phone calls, and we're looking for people who are in the arena in Richmond tonight to give us a call. This is the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Live from the 540 ESPN studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this is the Pro Wrestling Report with David Hero, Frank Cosentino, Linda Kay, and your host, Damian Nelson. I want to once again thank C-Pipe, Southeastern Wisconsin's very own C-Pipe, sings the song you're listening to, Lights, Camera, Action, the theme song for the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN. And I will tell you this: we got to get the cameras rolling during the breaks again. Because, oh my God! I mean, absolutely. we are there. There are politics flying around this room, and we're just Frank. Let me be say careful this. how you phrase that. Let me that say now. this from the depth of my soul, from the fiber yes. of my being. Yes, it's all good, bro. I, I'm putting my woo woo woo. Do you hear that? That was an authorization. Yes, it was. Tillman, go ahead. Tillman, <laughs> Tillman, wake up! We need it, and we need it bad. And we need it now. The cause is Titantron. Bring it on, you. He's the Diet Coke drinking, Dorito eating, temperature checking, Q stick chucking, senior statesman of the show. The cause. Welcome it's back to the thing. award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and makes... at ESPNMilwaukee.com. I think that's tremendous. Diet Coke drinking. I think it's fantastic. I love it. I dig. As long as it doesn't cause you to go on another one of those little rants that you went on a couple months back. <laughs> uh, for some reason, eight ball quarter pocket pops into mind for some strange reason. Dude. <laughs> Welcome back to the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report. Here at 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. <sighs> Uh, let's go to the phones. We want to hear from you guys. You've been waiting patiently on hold. Uh, let's go to line two. John in Queens, New York. You're live here Whoa, on the Pro Wrestling Report. Little Johnny? <laughs> hey, what's up, guys, man? What's going hey, on? Uh, hey, what's up, man? I just wanted to say one thing before my question, man. Why are you guys hating on my man Hero over there for, man? Thank yeah, with you. The disco, with the Disco Inferno? He Come picked on. Disco. What was wrong with that? <laughs> Listen, man, I download your thing from iTunes, man. I listen to it all week, man. <laughs> well, you should listen to it again. Yeah, and, yeah you guys are hating on Hero. <laughs> see, it's all about hate, isn't it? No, it's all yeah. about him. Look, I'm not going to No, I'm not see, even going to go a there. Super I wasn't in I'm the room. I'm a super friend. I'm a super friend. No, Beautiful. you know, you're, you're here to try to save the day because you, part of the Mighty Mouse Club, is on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, guys, I wanted to ask you a question because it, it's I've been waiting all week for this. Last week, you, you guys, and you kind of said it tonight, too, it's how we're, like, programmed to watch wrestling. It's kind of, you know, we're, it's like we, 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 like, you know, just it's like a force of habit to watch it. And I was thinking on that, that, like, um, you remember the Attitude Era? The reason why WWF went and snapped out like that is because they were threatened. And now that they're not threatened, you think that's the reason why – they're not giving it like they used to, because uh, even after the even after the the, the the attitude era, you still had guys like in the beginning of the '90s when SmackDown really really hit, and like they had WWF New York, and they used to do like um, Sunday Night Heat and stuff. It was good. Everybody, you know, was like top top entertainers, and now it feels like they they just don't give us it because they know we're gonna watch it anyway. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I, I hear you, John. But the, the important point there. Thank you very much for that call. They don't have it to give, and they tried to give it, and look at what they did for WrestleMania. You had Alberto Del Rio and The Miz, two guys who weren't really on the map 12 months ago, headlining that pay-per-view. And the WWE's business results, granted WrestleMania achieved a million buys, which is a great success, but The Rock did that. WWE's business results were not good compared to it's prior two years. two reasons why. And they have shareholders to answer to. One reason is it's no longer a wrestling company. It's now an entertainment company. And they have writers that script everything almost to the way the guys walk to the ring. Right. And the second thing is, if you really think about it, who are the agents that they have that put together the matches for Raw and SmackDown? They are former WCW wrestlers, a company that's out of business. Actually, WCW is the defunct 
wrestling company that went out of business and was purchased by WWE in 2000. Now, I'm not saying Dean Malenko isn't brilliant. Arn Anderson isn't brilliant. Finn Finley wasn't brilliant. You know, and the other WCW guys like Johnny Ace that they have in the company. But they hired guys that tried to put them out of business. That never, that they had good matches, and I'm sure they understand theory and psychology. But did Dean Malenko ever sell a million dollars worth of merchandise in a year? No. It's all about teaching guys how to, The well, Brooklyn the Brawler, no, Steve no. Lombardi, is the, one of the guys that takes the kids to promo. They have promo class for these guys. It is arguable, but it is, should be said. Some of the best workers and some of the best brains in professional wrestling never made it to championship roles or never made it to those opportunities to sell out the WrestleManias or never had that one piece. Which means they never got over. So why are they teaching the kids today? You need to get the guys that got over, that sold tickets. And many of those same guys were working backstage in those roles when The Rock made his fame. No, they weren't. Steve Austin made his fame. No, they weren't. Okay, J.J. Dillon. J.J. Dillon was brilliant. He worked with the Four Horsemen. He was main Rene eventing Goulet, with them. Whatever his name is. A lot of those guys, they, same situation, David Hero. I don't think that argument's valid. I, I, don't, think think, I don't think that argument's it, valid. Hold on, amigo. It's also a different company. Back then, it was a wrestling Absolutely. company. Correct. Now, yeah. it's more of a TV production company. It's micromanaged. And plus, back then, it was a team effort to go one-on-one with WCW. Right now, all those guys in the back are all insecure and paranoid about their spots. Except for the Miz. He should be paranoid like crazy <laughs> right now. His stock has fallen like, it's ridiculous. Really the only fast. person that is safe there is John Cena. That's it. On Raw. And why is that, Dave? Because he's such a great worker. Come on, Linda, you know the answer to that question. Okay, what you said was worse than what she said. I, I was she being said, sarcastic. Well, but the sound bite won't reflect that. That's fine. It doesn't matter. I know what I said. I know what I feel. It'll yeah. be fine. And it wasn't you in that picture either, was it? No. No. Nope. You, your account got hacked. You didn't send it out. That was Frank's account. Let's go to Antoine waiting on hold in Georgia. You're live here on the Pro Wrestling Report. Hello, guys. How you guys doing? Good. Tremendous, Antoine. What do you have for us this week? Good, good. Um, I just want to make a couple of comments. Um, I, I think the reason why we keep watching is because of certain things that we're hoping hoping that's going to happen, just like tonight, you know, with Booker T coming back, and then before WrestleMania you had The Rock in the ring. And, and Like you guys said, it, it might boil down that we're trained to watch, but I think we're just really diehard wrestling fans. And like someone said earlier, you're just hoping each and every week that, that you're going to get wrestling action inside the ring, just like tonight. I'm, I'm not a big Booker T fan, but just by him, his music playing, and him coming down the ring, it just makes me want to watch just another week. But it, Antoine, a point that's been made many times on this program is where does that get you? Okay, so Booker T wrestled tonight. Next week, there's no Booker T, or maybe there will be for a couple of weeks. What about everybody else? What about the, and I hate to use these words, what about the new guys, if you will? We you can't keep bringing back the Rock, Steve Austin, and everybody else because their stock will fall too eventually. I think this mm-hmm. Rock Cena match announcement for WrestleMania 28 is a risk that isn't worth taking for WWE because now, if the Rock is not advertised to be a part of Raw, why tune in? It's a mm. year from now. How are you going to build that for a year? Here's how you're going to build it for a year. You bring back Mick Foley to team up with The Rock and Rock and Sock Connection and then tease back and forth for a little while. But The Rock won't be there every week. But Mick Foley could be. Okay, so then there's still no Rock and Sock. My point is this. People will tune in to see The Rock. The ratings proved it. Mm -hmm. If The Rock's not on the program, that's a reason not to tune in. If people are tuning in to see The Rock, that same thing, if he's not there, that's a reason not to tune in. You're on the fence. You're thinking about it. Ah, I'm going to watch Raw tonight. I could go to a barbecue. I could go on a date. I could go and see a movie. I could go to the public pool. I can go pool? somewhere. And you're making that decision as to whether or not you're going to watch the programming or if what you're not. What pool is open at 8 o'clock at night? Oh, several. Okay. 
lights are off, but you can still get in. Thank you for that call, Antoine down in Georgia. Again, the number 414-276-ESPN or 1-800-990-ESPN. Uh, Linda, do we have anything good going on on Twitter? Uh, just other comments um, on the opening. I know we talked about our truth earlier and our thoughts on our truth and looks like he's upping up his comedy. You mentioned something about that, Dave, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's funny, haha. My point is to say no, that he is funny. We, yeah. Okay. Don't get hot. Not. <laughs> when I'm hot, I say I'm hot, Dave. I agree. When's that calendar out? Huh? Yes, the calendar. I'm going to assume sometime in late fall. I really don't know about it. when it comes out. I'm sure there'll be a premiere party some sort here in Milwaukee, and yeah. you're all welcome. Oh, well now. Wait, wait, did you say catering? <laughs> Linda's going to be in the Coyote Ugly calendar, and all you can think about is catering? Absolutely. Oh, my Frank gosh. Saw, Frank saw the pictures. <sighs> got to sign off before they get out. Frank, amigo, inner voice. Damien Nelson, please. I'm at a loss. <laughs> I am too. Who thinks of catering at a time like that? No, I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't want my <clears throat> comments from earlier to be misinterpreted. I never said, and it's amazing to me how people will oh, say that you said that. Yeah, tell me about it. Where you never whatever. said that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I never said I was done watching wrestling. I never said, I'm never going to watch WWE again. I'm never going to watch TNA again. That's an asinine statement to make. And those of you who've said it, you've probably not really done it. What I said was, it's becoming a chore. I'm getting to the point of being done with wrestling. Doesn't mean I'm done watching. Doesn't mean I'm done being a fan. I've been in love with wrestling since 1987. That will never change. But, Give me a reason. I'm begging you. Give me a reason to stay tuned in. I thoroughly enjoyed SmackDown last week. I thoroughly enjoyed Impact last week. I haven't watched Superstar since it went off TV. I haven't watched NXT since it went off TV. There's good wrestling out there. It has to be found. But what frustrates me, and we're going to do a primetime special on this, Dave Hero, how politics have impacted wrestling. And Are what, you sure you want to have that conversation? What, what politics means in wrestling? Because a lot of people talk politics, 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 people getting pushed, deep pushed, right. doghouse, all that stuff. But quite frankly, most of them don't know what the heck they're talking about. So we're going to break it down for you in a couple of weeks. And maybe use the whiteboard and be the booker, if you will, and talk about politics and wrestling. I think it's a conversation that needs to be had, and we will have it for you. This is the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. ...their way around the wrestling ring, but certainly not a whole hell of a lot about being in it. This is the Pro Wrestling Report Radio. She's the calendar posing, bar crawling, concert going, social media diva, Linda Kay. She's real, damn real. Welcome back to the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report. We're live on Monday night. I like that song. June 6th, Ursher. Jason Derulo. Jason Derulo. Is he uh, from across the pond, Jason Derulo? No. I'm getting mixed messages here. Hey, we got to get over there to the U.K., being planned, and you're not part of it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Broke his heart. Okay, when you learn to only use the Amex for approved and authorized purchases, uh, then maybe you'll get a ticket to the U.K. Until that point. You know what, Tillman? There's a clip we need to find. We've talked about it. I don't want to play it now, but we've got to find a clip, because this is how you all got me feeling tonight. Accusing me of being behind this whole Disco Inferno thing, conspiring against me, I'm just going to use words that have been used before by another man to express my dissatisfaction with you all's behavior tonight. And I thought was, you all were professionals. I'm an opinionist. Let's go back to the phone. Let's go to Andre in Philadelphia. You're live here on the Pro Wrestling Report. Philadelphia. Hey, what's going on, guys? Andre. Doing good. Keep teasing, Andre. <laughs> 
Um, I just wanted to make a comment on um, what y'all was talking about earlier about, uh, you know, feeling like you're programmed to watch wrestling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't think that – I'm not sure if, you know, if people just feel like they're programmed to watch wrestling or just so much just being completely disinterested because there's so much scripting going on and guys aren't allowed to be themselves. Each character seems like they're a cookie cutter of another. And after a while, it just becomes boring. You can you can see, but you can just basically not really. You can tune in. You can not tune in for weeks, and then come back and feel like you're watching the same thing you did. You you missed out a couple of weeks ago. It just doesn't feel like anything is fresh that's going on each and every week. But you know what? what what's also true, Andre, is <clears throat> wrestling itself has changed. What the fans and what the audience want has changed. What the companies have to deliver has changed. Well, you can blame ECW for that, but... Frank does. I don't. ECW ruined wrestling. Dave does. I don't. How did ECW ruin wrestling? Granted, it made it less realistic. Yes. Sure. There it you go. But well, at its core, wrestling has always been a controlled situation with a premeditated outcome. Well, when we have guys taking eight and nine chair shots to the head and not getting pinned... And but then lose to a John Cena still does it. John Cena wouldn't be around if it wasn't for ECW. Oh, you've got to oh. be kidding me. <laughs> okay, great wrestler, great worker. Super Cena. All right, if ECW were in wrestling for the reason that people didn't sell, then John Cena not selling should mean ECW made him, right? He's not selling a like a body slam. He's selling tickets. Okay. Yeah, the little Jimmy. Jimmy. That's what I said, little not Jimmy. Not Jenny from the block. Andre in Philadelphia, <clears throat> thank you very much for that phone call. Let's you know what, to... though? He is right. There are way too many cookie-cutter guys out there right now. He's absolutely right. And you know what? The other thing that bothers me, how come it's the... Ethnic wrestlers that get the stereotypes turned way up. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I, I, I'll I'll explain it for you. Okay. Please do. Okay. John Cena, Spirit. Randy Orton, The Miz, Big Show, Kane. They come out regular. What do you, you mean by regular? Just with no extra, you know, added flavor to it. What do you mean by flavor? Our truth, Ron Killings. He comes out there doing like a Michael Jackson on crack impersonation, you know, all over the place. I, I, I'm not familiar with He takes like the stereotypical action and, mul- and just turns the volume up on it to be a heel. Why does he have to do that? Because it's what the viewing audience expects. No, yes, I don't think is. so. Yes, it I is. Don't bu- yes, it is. Did Booker T do that? He does it to this day. No, he doesn't. He crosses both lines. But he can go back and forth. He's not just all one way. Seriously, look at the Pope. Did you call him recently? Not from the bathroom. i got to give Elijah Burke a lot of credit. We've heard from a lot of fans all over the world who have reached out to him and mm-hmm. spoke to him live via phone, uh, via his phone number that he gave out on this very program exclusively, and is really having conversations with these fans. It's pretty amazing. I think it's, he's done as well as expected the last few weeks. Well, I think we should give out Frank's phone number tonight. Talk to the fans. What is four one four three three one? I got it in here. Where is it? You don't mind, do you, Frank? No, nah, go ahead. Sweet. You're not giving Frank's number out on this program. Yeah, it's no, no, you're not. I, I, nine one five nine two nine two. No, no that's Sylvan's number. And Sylvan didn't appreciate getting a 3 a.m. phone call because of your shenanigans. Whoa, how do I have Sylvan and Frank under the same contact list? That's crazy. Oh, here it is. I got it now. Let's go to Will in Louisiana online, too. Oh, really? Okay. I want to see our truth. I want to see him dance. I want to see him dance. I'm little dizzy. Oh, dear God. Can we give it a rest, everybody? That was impressive. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, I just want to make a quick statement about the uh, state, quote unquote. Six nine. Do what? No, that's the uh, that's Thursday. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, you know what? You know what? You're, you're breaking up on me. I'm sorry. I, I... Let's do a reboot. Start all over again. Okay. I just wanted to make a quick comment about the state of WWE. Is that okay? Go ahead. Absolutely. Okay. Um. I'm a little disappointed with WWE's professionalism right now. I think that might be contributing to uh, their kind of low product. Uh, I read on your website, pwrshow.com, cheap plug. Good. Uh, Very good. Well placed. Thank you. 
about um, the rib that they were pulling on Mark Henry in the dark main event. You know, I'm all for guys playing ribs on each other, and you know, it it keeps them it keeps them fun, it keeps them loose, it keeps them sane, keeps them almost with that camaraderie. Mm-hmm. But I think that should stay in between the locker room and in private time, and management should not go and do that to a wrestler when it comes at the expense of the fans. Those fans who are wanting a dark main event, whether they knew it or not. Okay, and you know what? Like Here, that. Here's my question for you: dark match main event with Mark Henry and who? Who would you have wanted to have seen? Uh, to be honest, I don't know, but why would you want to see the breaking down of videos and Mike's cutting in and out and then Henry just kind of storming up the steps, and that's not really a big climax to an event that you spent 60 bucks tickets for. You know, here's the dirty little secret, Will, and I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with you, but the dirty little secret, most of those advertised main events don't happen. Last time SmackDown was here, it didn't happen. The advertised main event never occurred, and it was fine. That's true, but I'm saying when it comes to the ending of your show, you want to get your fans to leave knowing that they got their money's worth. I don't think they did that in that situation because uh, the fans were scratching their heads going, what just happened with Mark Henry? And it wasn't for storyline either. Yeah, no, you're probably probably, probably valid there. Thank you very much for that call, Will, in Louisiana. But David David Hero is a promoter. Yes. There's one line that is the promoter's best friend when it comes to advertising wrestling matches. Card is subject to change without notice. And uh, that is done not to get out of anything, but, I mean, I, who knows what the plan was. And if you haven't heard, the story was Mark Henry comes down to the ring for an apparent dark match after last week's SmackDown taping. Stands there. Stands there. Stands there. Stands there. Now, to me, that would have been the funny. Promo. I would have laughed. I would have. That would have been funny to me. Attempts to cut a promo to kill time. No opponent ever comes out. Walks back up the ramp. That, that's the end of the show. Um, so I, whatever the I was at a show it. on March 31st, and we paid between I don't know, like 66 or 69 dollars a ticket, and that same thing kind of happened, and it was funny. Do you remember what was the match where in Madison Square Garden Vince McMahon came out and stopped the match and made him start over or something? No, like he that. just stopped it and ended it. It was Rhino and somebody else. It was that bad in his mind that he mm-hmm. came out and stopped it. Like I've, in front of everybody. I've done that before. I've walked out at a show and, and said, you know what? Just end it. Just be done. Yes. Or go go home. When we come back, we're going to talk to David in Michigan, Ricardo in Houston, and you two can join us, 414-276-ESPN, 1-800-990-ESPN. More discussion on as well on TNA Impact and last week's SmackDown. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Stop stalking your ex and be our friend on Facebook and join the tremendous worldwide discussion. Facebook.com slash Pro Wrestling Report. Welcome back to the award winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Welcome back. We're live Monday, June 6, 2011. Damian Nelson along with the cause, David Hero, and the lovely Linda Kay, the social media diva. Calendar. We do understand that we are having some connectivity issues. Um, David Hero, some or other, took down the internet here in the studio. So we're having some challenges with the ESPN stream right now. But we are also live on Blog Talk Radio, blogtalkradio.com slash PWR. Always have a plan B, cause. Absolutely. Let's talk about TNA Impact from last week, which I thought was very eventful. Firstly, Kid Anderson continuing his throwback sting things, if you will. And last week, wrestling the great Muta, which was Eric Young with face paint and green mist in his mouth. And what I don't understand is why the great Muta defeated thing that made no sense but i will say this what ken anderson has been doing with sting and how the whole program with sting has been great because they haven't touched each other yet it's been cat and mouse game the last couple weeks and that's how you build the match that means something because you're waiting for sting to get a hold of the guy except for the part with muda winning it but uh, well you know what's great about it right I was watching that on DVR. 
because, you know, I'm moving and shaking. And uh, actually, it was just yesterday I was watching it. And um, I paused, and I searched on my DirecTV HD box, um, because you can search YouTube videos on there now, and picked up some great Muda videos. Of I'd forgotten just how – I hadn't forgotten, but it had been so long since I'd seen how great the great Muta was. At one point, he was my favorite wrestler. For really? About three months, yeah. Who was he feuding when he was your favorite wrestler? Uh, I'd go with uh, Flair. Uh-huh. Or, well, uh, was it Flair? Was it Sting? I don't know. It was, Wait, it was in his WCW. You know what made Muta so good back then, besides he was a tremendous wrestler, was the old After magazines, you know. Yeah. PWI. You'd always heard about this guy. You always heard, and then yep. they had the stories. When you were other... trading tapes. Yeah. Yep. Back in the day. And see, that's what wrestling is missing today. Is Tape the... trading? No, it's the vignettes. It's just the way how they used to build the guys up. I mean, there are no more. Yeah, there, there's a few wrestling magazines out there, but now the wrestling fans are so much smarter that you don't believe all the stuff that's in it. And they are kind of – they're more expensive than what they should be because they don't sell as many, so they got to raise the price. But, yeah, that's what also made wrestling fun, were, were how good the magazines were that helped build the feuds and make the guys from different territories bigger stars when they came in somewhere else. There was still a bit of mystery to the unconnected world at the time. Now the world's so connected, people – I mean, they're, they're they sitting at work, and they – you know, are sitting there on their phone and on Twitter. That, that, I mean, that's what happens nowadays, and, and you know what's going on, and you may not know what's happening around you at the same time. But uh, back in the day, you had to read those magazines. You had to trade tapes. You had – there was no I YouTube. I get nervous when there's a sparkle in your eye like that. What are you up to? How are you, Linda? Oh, boy. I'm good. I'm trying to get some Facebook comments there. On my phone. You are – that's why you're the social media diva. The internet, her four monitors in front of her are down, so she's using her her, her iPhone to try to figure out. Blackberry. You're cool <laughs> if you have an iPhone. I know. like my That's why okay. people buy them. They don't even know what the thing does, and they run Blackberry. out and buy an iPhone. Oh, i got to get an iPhone. Why? Oh, i got to get an iPhone. Why? What? Apple, what did they announce today? Now they're putting stuff in the cloud, which like, Microsoft's been doing for the last couple of years. The iCloud. Makes me nervous. Is that anywhere near Cloud 9? Yeah. Very close. Yeah, I think I, I, I think it's beyond Cloud Nine. ODB is back and she's on a rampage. Are we done talking about Ken Anderson? My first pick in the you draft. Just, you took we took up an hour and a half of the show talking about No, I did Raw. not. Ken Anderson is gonna leave the impact zone as the world champion on Sunday. Slammiversary is this Sunday on pay per view. We'll be doing a full preview of that pay per view on Be the Booker this Thursday on Primetime, where we'll also be reviewing the Nitro D V D. Yes. This Thursday at primetime, be the booker for Slammiversary. David Hur, I think one important point need be made. Going into this pay-per-view on Sunday, <clears throat> in the draft, the PWR Fantasy Draft, Frank, of which you are the moderator, Yep. the Nelson family is winning with 570 cumulative points. Super Friends, Mighty Mouse Club, 540 points. And going into it, we're neck and neck, bro. 50 points each going into the pay-per-view. That's fine. Before the matches happen. All I care about is what happens in Miami. When the fat lady sings? And I'm going to buy a fat lady. I'm going to do it. If I have to go to Vegas and bring her to Miami, I'm going to buy a fat lady. Okay. And have her sing and serenade you all night long. All right. That's fine. What song? So? I'm going to have Strudel in the room. Is she going to sing Rihanna I'm song? Pie sitting there. Oh, she's not. No, she's going to sing Dude, opera. Leave your Strudel separate. ODB. Is back with a vengeance. She looks great, great too, doesn't she? She does look she great. Had a celebrating a birthday today, Frank. Did yes. you you I tried did. to spank her and got spanked? I did. I wished her a happy birthday and wished her hope that she didn't kick my ass. Again. Again. You know, I just realized something. Because she attacked me on primetime one week when you and Rashi Brown had some, you were collusioning. And, uh, <laughs> and ODB threw me out of my own studio. <laughs> and you were... <laughs> That was pretty damn funny. Luna Vachon choked me out once, and ODB has thrown me out of my own studio. You don't, don't do well with women, do you? With strong women. Strong women. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a lover. I guess. Let me know how that works for you. Page two. Uh, yeah, so he has the notes here. We have no notes. 
earlier tonight you said something about being an opinionist. Could you pick what you are? I am. I'm an opinionist, but give me some Alex Shelley about. replaces Robert Rude on beer money, making a little bit of gun money mm. this Sunday on pay per view. Makes me nervous. Defending the tag team titles. You still have points riding on this match. I know I hero. do. Makes me nervous. But uh, TNA making the best of a situation featuring Alex. Is and Bobby Rude really hurt? That's the part See, I don't know. See, that's the part I don't know. No one has said if he's hurt or not. Yeah. I mean, this could all be part of an angle where Bobby Rude screws. James Storm, mm, and then he mm-mm, joins Immortal. Mm-mm. Yeah, I could see that happening. Bobby Roode is a tremendous talent. We've had him on this program several times. You can check out the archives and, and listen to his interview with us. Is he at the point where he could be accepted by fans as a standalone singles yes. talent? Really? With TNA fans, yes. What does that mean? They're different than they're different fans than the WWE fans. I don't think the WWE fans would understand how good Bobby Roode is. Because that's not the kind of wrestling they're used to seeing. Bobby Roode can go with anybody on either roster. Let's go to a quick phone call. Let's go to David in Michigan waiting on line three. You're live here on the Pro Wrestling Report. How's it going? David, it's a tremendous night here in the MKE. Not too bad. Um, I was going to comment on, I actually tweeted last week about talking to the Pope on the phone. Oh, you did speak to him? Yes. Excellent. Did you get communion? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, he was, he was actually a really cool and down-to-earth guy, like I tweeted about that. And um, I was actually surprised, actually. I thought you'd just hear, like, a voicemail, actually. I didn't think you'd actually pick up. So it was really a nice surprise, actually. How long did you talk on the phone with him for? Maybe about 10 or 15 minutes. Wow. wow. Now, you do know that it's 99 cents a minute? Call me now. I got unlimited calling. No, no, no. I'm saying, but when you call the number, you get charged on it. Those 904 numbers. All bad. I never got no... Oh, uh, wait to get your bill. No David, stop it. You're going to make poor David scared. <laughs> David, you're, you're evil. <laughs> I'm just going to start calling you Newman. David, yeah. TNA Impact last week. What would you think? Oh, uh, it was actually really good. Well, it was, one <laughs> it was that good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what left one hundred impression? Brian Kendrick and Kaz really. It was a good I match. Mean, that was a good match. That was a great match. I mean, I really enjoyed that match. Now, are you glad uh, that it was on Impact, or would you have paid to see that on pay per view? I was actually glad to see that on Impact because a good match like that for free, we haven't got something like that from Impact in a long, like probably since Kurt Angle and AJ went to that draw like last year, I believe. Yeah, uh, that match is still better, but still. Now, uh, David, what are your thoughts on Crimson? You know, I've endorsed him. We kind of continue to good. get propelled last Thursday on Impact. He's got a match with Samoa Joe this Sunday at Slammiversary on pay per view. He's got the look. He's got the skill. He may have that it factor. But what do you think? I don't like his finisher, but I, he kind of reminds me of how they did Goldberg in WCW a little bit. They're try, or even he is undefeated. Joe, say in TNA. Well, yeah, team, Joe was defeated, undefeated for two years as well. But I think he's getting pushed kind of too fast. Really? Because I think they should have kept with the tag. You're not saying with Steiner exactly, but, you know, I'm more for, like, the paying your dues type thing. Well, what, what makes you think he hasn't paid his dues already? Well, I'm not trying to say he hasn't, but I'm just used to, you know, how you see tags. You become a tag team, and then you break up, and then you become a singles competitor, and then – Go for your title, you know, something like that. Yeah. I wow. think he's being brought along at the right pace. Yeah. I don't think he's being shoved down our throat. Because if you think about it, ahead of him is Kurt Angle, Jeff Jarrett, Bully Ray, Ken Anderson, Sting, even Matt Hardy is still at the same level or slightly ahead of him. You guys are the experts. I just watch it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Linda Kay is the expert because she knows more about John Cena than anybody else yeah. I know. David from Michigan, thank you very much for calling. I'm glad you off. had that opportunity to speak to the Pope on the phone. Wait and you, get that you can bill, find buddy. that website, uh, I'm sorry, that phone number on our website, pwrshow.com. I want to thank, uh, again, David from Michigan for that call. We're going to take our final time out of the evening. When we come back, uh, maybe we'll have that stupid Del Hero washed up song of the week or I don't know whatever this is the award winning pro wrestling report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com
The Pro Wrestling Report. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. But you already knew that. This is the Pro Wrestling Report, live on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report. We're in our final stretch here, live Monday, June 6th. want to uh, let you know, special programming note, we're going to be back here on 540 ESPN next Thursday, June 16th, 10 o'clock p.m., right after TNA Impact. Uh, however, don't forget, each and every Monday night, no matter what our 540 ESPN schedule is, we will be live on Blog Talk Radio after WWE Raw. So either it's a simulcast from here on 540 ESPN or a standalone post show. And this Sunday after Slammiversary. Holy crap. That means we got three shows starting Sunday? Four with TV? Yep. Maybe that's what's contributing to my burnout. I, You know what? I, I think so. Maybe you need to take a little Should vacation. I cancel primetime? This week's primetime? Absolutely. We'll we get that Nitro we DVD we review. You know what? It's, we don't need TV this week. We no, we got to do. Be, will you stop it? No, oh, no, we're doing TV. We can do a be the Booker segment. Linda has. We're doing club prime time. We're not having this conversation on air. Ah, fine. You will meet your contractual obligations. Four shows Sunday after Slammiversary, the post show Monday, the post show Thursday, show back on five forty ESPN. And also PWR Primetime TV. It kind of reminds me of Oprah's little sweatshops she had going, you know? That's how I feel right now. Four show, four shows in a week? You know what show I'm addicted to now? The the behind-the-scenes Oprah show. Oh, I thought you were going say the extreme couponing. How funny you say it. I just got an email about that. Did you? Spam. Did they ask you to get on it? That was C- a different Casting email. call? Oh. Casting, casting call. Casting what? Do email. they, have, do they really know. have casting couches still? Either one of you can answer. Uh, well, Frank would know. Mick Foley has departed TNA Wrestling. We alluded to it earlier. He has been quite vocal in uh, some of the things that he wanted to see happen in TNA. And I was actually intrigued by this storyline between him, Bischoff, and Hogan. Now, seemingly, that is done as the firing of uh, Mick Foley on Impact last week was a uh, explanation ah, of his departure from the company. I knew you were, you jogged my mind. I wanted to speak about something similar to this. Tommy Dreamer's done with TNA. Yeah, what's the next news story? Okay. Thank you for ruining it. No, 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 no. Mick Foley is done with TNA. He is. Raven, uh, Sandman, all the whole EV, Richards. the whole EV2 thing that they invested three or four months into is now oh, completely gone. gone. Three or four months. Relevant. That was last September, wasn't it? When no, they it had that pay per view. August. Okay. Yeah. So a year ago, let's say. There's nothing left of it. Should and there they be? invested no. They invested so much into they that. They gave him a whole pay per view. Well when you're and they gave don't him, you try anything. They gave him kind of two pay per views and a whole bunch of T V time for those guys and now none of them are left. Is it what different between that and TNA, doing it for w, WWE no, giving it to Austin? Big tonight. difference. TNA has a history of starring quote unquote big angles and never any payoff on them. Hummer? That's that that too, absolutely. You're talking about politics. So they build up the whole thing with the network, and now it's gone. I was Every time I heard the network, though, I cringed. Because it was just so ECW 1995. Right. right. Not 95, actually, 97, 99-ish. Uh, but uh, it will make Foley be missed in TNA Wrestling. Yes. No. I Maybe think so. Will. No, yeah, well. Maybe for some, what is but, this, a love but, letter? I, but I doubt it. <laughs> the Mick Foley will Tommy, will miss will Mick Tommy Foley. Dreamer be missed in uh, TNA Wrestling? But has Mick been an important piece in the past few months? In the fa- past few months, no. Yeah, so, I mean, and no one's at, I, I haven't seen anyone saying bring back Mick Foley. Wow, well, he's only been gone for three days. No, but the month leading up to him being gone. Yeah. I'm not sure... Well, but this was certainly, over the course of the last few months, his best utilization. He really hadn't been used for anything relevant or important. I'm telling you right now. And where's Ric Flair? Mick asked for his release, and I believe it's for one reason. He saw the reaction The Rock got when he went back. He sees the reaction Austin got when he goes back. He saw the reaction that Triple H got 
that's mixed home. That's mixed family. Right. And just like professional sports, or whether it's uh, football, whatever, those entertainers, those athletes that are in wrestling. Wrestlers. Those, correct. They miss that opportunity to go in front of 15,000 people. And, and TNA they right now unfortunately have, doesn't have that. They well, let's all not forget have egos. Let's not forget what Mick Foley said on Twitter back when he was still. And apparently his contract does go through September, but he's been let out of it early. Uh, but a couple of weeks ago, saying on Twitter something to the effect of, um, it was like they're it, it was talking to the Rock, saying reminiscing about their empty arena match that got like a seven rating or something right. during the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, liking it to a TNA house show because you know about the same number of people are there. Right. Uh, saying things like that. But, you know, that's sort of Mick Foley I'll, as well. I mean, David Hero, you're in his book, page 59, 97, whatever. Thanks. Pat. I'm on page 99. Yeah. Well, you got the color picture. I got the guy that made him sick to his stomach. But you know what's funny is the things I complained to him about in TNA is now what he is now talking about as he left the company. Right. I. What, what do you think? Makes a, a possible return. To There's WWE. no question in my mind that you will see Mick Foley back Before in the, the WWE year? by Miami. He might be in the Hall of Fame with The Rock. The Rock and Sock connection. I firmly believe that's what we're going to see. Here's what people need to remember as well. Just because you may not figure out how it can make sense for a person to return to a televised role in WWE, coming up on the next Wrestling Roundtable, um, Legends Roundtable rather, from WWE On Demand, Kevin Nash is going to be part of that panel. Hacksaw Jim Duggan's hosting house shows, acting as, if, as the GM role. So this is what they're using, personal appearances and things of that nature. This is what they're using a lot of these talents for, and it's both valuable to the talent because they can still do their own thing and get a WWE paycheck, and also valuable to WWE because they can utilize those talents and their skills and their expertise. As you were talking about earlier, David Hero, they need a mind like a Mick Foley, like a Kevin Nash, to guide some of these younger stars who may not have even been wrestling for a year on the right course to be those next huge superstars in the business. You know, we've had the opportunity to sit down with the likes of Mick Foley, Kevin Nash, Al Snow, Rikishi, certain guys, and listen to the Road Dog and Billy Gunn. We learn more from just talking to those guys than we do anything right. else. You know, when uh, in the Sweet and Sexy, we're sitting there with Brad Armstrong and uh, the Road Dog and watching them talk about the matches. I learned so much just standing next to Brad Armstrong, pointing things out. Stuff you'll never see. No, you'll never see, but are just so obvious. Mm -hmm. That's what they're lacking. That's what they. Road Dog Jesse James, Brian James, BG James would be a fantastic agent for that company because he was a guy that everyone said he did not have a whole lot of talent. But when he got to the ring, there was nobody more over than Road Dog Jesse James. Right. Well, we'll see what, ha- <clears throat> we'll see what happens with uh, Mick Foley going forward. David Hero, I believe you've requested some time to do this ridiculous draft pick to replace Karma. And what are you going to do if the Miz is indeed injured? Because uh, You know what? I'm going to hold off on this until I find out what's going on. One, maybe two announcements on TV this week, since we're going to have TV this week. I got your memo as far as that. Yeah, the whole disco thing you tried to pull, ridiculous. And you know what, Linda? You you know what? You kind of started the whole thing. How did I do that? Because I said, just go. You're like, disco? Disco? And then Frank, for some reason, was blinded by your beauty and agrees with you. He's like, oh, yeah, disco, disco inferno. That's who you're picking? Damien Watson, big old smile on his face, trying to screw over the super friends. Oh, yeah, I heard it, too. You weren't even in the room. So we'll do it on TV where the world I can allow see you. my two picks. Frank's not there on TV. He's in, they're in Studio That's B. Fine. They can be in Studio no, B. No, no, which means I get the final say, and I'm do you, damn sure not going to let you pick somebody else. you need me to bring Cal along? I'll bring him. I want to wish happy birthday to one of our followers on Twitter. I believe celebrating his 19th birthday today. Uh, username at Trevor Harris 18. Happy birthday. Happy happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> and I want to remind all of you we will be live again on Sunday right after TNA Slammiversary. This is the award winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPN Milwaukee. 
www.thebigshowradio.com.